Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Memer Dream, the series where we take decks that Wizards publishes over on Magic.gg, saying that they got six or more wins in a row at Plan Them Rank or Better, and put them to the test, trying to find out, are they a dream and actually pretty good, even though they might look super janky, or are they just as janky as they look in a meme, and we got a good one this week. Week, this deck list, it scares me and it also cracks me up. This is a historic deck from the infamous Platinum Mythic Rank player. Uh, Wizards doesn't actually publish people's names, which is probably a good thing for the sake of this series. And this deck is absolutely wild. So first, the mana base is five colors and it's playing mostly basic lands, which that worries me. Are we actually going to be able to cast any of our spells? that's going to be challenge number one. The overall plan of the deck seems to be get a world tree, hopefully get up to 10 mana so we can crack it. And then we got a lot of one of gods in the deck, Aketras and Elrons and Perforoses and Ronuses and Scarab Gods. Uh, basically, if we actually get to 10 mana and have two of each color and have a world tree and activate it, we probably should win the game. The rest of the deck though, it is so weird. Like almost everything's a one of. There's very few cards that show up as more than one copy. And the thing that cracks me up most about this deck is some of the random cards it's playing. So I can kind of see the world train a bunch of gods. That makes sense. Like that's a pretty known jank plan. Uh, obviously super janky and memey, but it is a thing that can actually work. The thing that cracks me up about this deck is you know whoever was building this deck has played a little bit of historic and his loss to specific decks. So they threw in a bunch of like one and two of hate pieces for specific matchups. Like, you know, someone got him with hardened scales at one point. So they just took and threw in some Blight Beetles just in case they run to that matchup. They probably got milled out at one point, so there's some Gaia's Blessings in case someone tries to mill us. Obviously, Arena players love their life gain. Muscle off to the lost to the life gain deck. So there's a single Tainted Remedy. So these are powerful hate cards in very specific narrow matchups. The problem is they're all one of. So even in the right matchup, what are your odds of drawing it? And if you do draw, what are your odds of casting it with this mana base? The other thing about this deck, I gotta give a shout out. One thing we always talk about our Memer Dream is just put cards in your sideboard. Many Memer Dream decks don't have a sideboard or hardly have any cards in the sideboard. And one thing we always preach is throw anything. Literally, I don't care what it is, but any cards in your sideboard are better than no cards in the sideboard. It's not like you got to go out and craft specific cards. Just throw in whatever you happen to have in your collection, and it's going to be better than not having a sideboard if you're playing best of three. And this deck seems to have done that. <laughs> it almost has a full sideboard. So close, Platinum Mythic Rank Player. We got up to 14 cards, so we were almost there to being able to have a full sideboard. And I think they took the advice of just throw literally anything into the sideboard, pretty literally in this case. Uh, <laughs> There's a little bit of this, the Mirage Mirror, to, I guess, copy all of our legends for some reason. And Search of Greatness, I don't know, maybe we scry or ramp with it. Some removals, some anthems for some reason. I don't know why our five-color deck is playing Sylvan Anthem. It is weird. It is, Imperius Perfect, probably the best card in the entire sideboard. Why is it an Elf Lord? Why are we playing this card? I don't even think we have any Elves in the deck. I'm sure there is probably a rant. Oh, Circle of Dreams, Druid. So there is an Elf in the deck. But why are we playing an Elf Lord in our sideboard? So... On one hand, I give the player credit for at least putting something in the sideboard, and I would rather see 14 random cards in the sideboard than zero cards in the sideboard. But the next step in Memer Dream sideboard development is to actually play cards that you might want to put in your deck at some point, unlike an Imperius Perfect. Also, not quite there. We're almost there. We're learning. Platinum Mythic Rank player is learning. We're up to 14 cards. You can still play one more, but we're close enough in this case. So, is playing one of every god in almost all basic lands and random hate cards and a very random, almost complete sideboard. A meme or a dream? Let's jump into some games and find out. Today's video is brought to you by our awesome sponsor, Card Kingdom. You can get all the Dominaria United cards you need and help support the show over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Oh yeah, also, <laughs> uh, we randomly got to Mythic, so we we are uh, 
<laughs> we are meme and dreaming at the Mythic rank on Magic Arena this week. Mythic 98. If we if we can win six in a row, we might be like Mythic number one with, with this deck, which we, that would be the literal dream. Hopefully our opponent is playing Harden Scales and we got him. Uh, we do have all of our colors of mana. Not sure what Biomancer is familiar actually does in this deck. Return, I guess we keep because we have three colors of mana. I think that's... I think that's the win. All right. Snow covered planes, go. Abone it. Harden scales, harden scales, harden scales. Come on, one time. Orzave. Uh, well, let's play this on blue. I'm trying to wait because we do have more forests than any other basic. So trying to wait to see if we draw forest and then in theory we can, oh no. Oh no. All right, well put this on green. Play the Ilsen carry added. I mean, ramp spell number one. So Blight Beetle not looking. Not looking great here. Opponent's playing the the historic combo deck. Kethis combo, I believe. The Graveyard Exile mode of Return to Nature could do something at some point. Opponent, Relic of Legends, mills themselves. Well, there's a Mox Amber, that's kind of an issue. Well, that's a world tree. So, is there a chance we lose the game this turn if we cap? You know what, we're gonna play Vizier. We can't play lands off the top, right? Only creatures. All right, world tree, go. I mean, so we're up to five mana, six mana. We got a perforos, which won't look out. <laughs> Do nothing with this, pwn it. Reality chip mills themselves. And then they can equip with Relic of Legends. Hmm. Well, sadly, why we have hate cards for a lot of matchups, this is not one that we actually really have hate cards for. <laughs> I guess Return to Nature is like sort of a hate card. Flibblethip draws a card, mills some cards. Layers of Kethis. So what are we hoping for? So we can Blight Beetle. I guess Vizier is kind of mana fixing. Vizier, Biomancer is familiar. I mean, I guess our hope is to somehow get to get to the mana. Like we have the world tree. So if somehow we actually get to 10 mana, we sh or 11 mana, I guess, because we need to sack the world tree. But if we get to 11 mana, we probably win. I'm surprised they're not just equipping the reality chip. Maybe they want removal. All right, Ottawa to bounce the vizier. Well, play the swamp, play the vizier. Play the raven. <laughs> His blessing. Oh. Hmm. Shuffling some of our opponent's stuff in could actually be relevant. Well, if we, I mean, we could die, I think, at any moment. Opponent has a lot of mana because of this Relic of Legends. So, with the right combo pieces, it seems like our opponent can go infinite basically at any time. Oh. So, dead? Kathis, Mox Amber. Yeah, so this is infinite. So opponent has two. We're not gonna we're not gonna sit through all this. Maybe our opponent times out, but that well, that's actually is that in the spirit of Memer Dream? <laughs> I guess if you're playing Memer Dream, maybe you gotta take the the worst wins possible. I don't think the top combo actually times out. So what happens here? Keth is lets our opponent cast legends from their graveyard by exiling two two spells from their graveyard. They have a Mox Amber, they have another one in their graveyard. So basically, every time they cast Mox Amber, they mill two cards, which is enough that they can fuel the Kethis. The Mox Ambers keep Legend rolling, looping, infinite-ish mana, and then eventually, after our opponent does all that, they can play the Jace from their graveyard, because that's a Legend, and win the game with Jace's static ability. So, um, I mean, our opponent, they 100% they win here. An opponent, once they cast the first Mox Amber, we'll just scoop, because I think that'll... All right, Hope of Gurupur. Unsure why they're doing this, okay. I mean, our hope is that our opponent <clears throat> somehow is at Mythic and doesn't know how to play their combo deck. All right, so there's a Mox Amber. Opponent appears to know what they're doing. Yeah, we will. We will scoop it up and see if any of the random cards in our sideboard save us. Okay, Vanquish the Horde, no. Il Harag, no. Search of Greatness, no. Sylvan Anthem, no. What about Imperius Perfect? <laughs> Is the Elf Lord the solution to all of life's problems? Unfortunately, so Graph Digger's Cage does help, but unfortunately we don't have much graveyard hate. <laughs> the Chroma's Memorial. Um, we don't have much graveyard hate. So Tainted Remedy doesn't do anything. Blight Beetle doesn't do anything. Gaia's Blessing kinda does something. We'll bring in Leyline Prowler because it's more ramp. Hard for me to imagine Azusa doing much in a 22 land deck, but in search of greatness, maybe? You know what, let's in search of greatness. Let's run a, 
<laughs> Let's run it like that. Well, uh, so far, so bad. So I would say if I was gonna try to build this deck, I would focus very heavily on ramping, probably more heavily than this deck is. Um, because you really wanna get to that 11 mana mark the, to activate the world tree. So I would probably overload on ramp spells and just hope hope to actually get there. All right, it is the Rona's tribal hand. I mean, maybe Rona's tribal can work. Jorn has some synergy. Jorn can actually untap untap some lands, which is kind of relevant. We only have one snow land, but that's another way we could get enough mana to do our thing. Hope of Gurupur. Shurupur. Well, there's a Leyline Prowler. That's some ramp. Well, play the land, pass the turn. Opponent. We also don't really have removal, I don't think. <laughs> not a meaningful amount. So it's not like we can just kill the combo pieces. Botanical Sanctum. Kinnon. Yeah, that's, we would like to kill that, but. Oh God, Mox Amber, that taps for two mana. Oh my god, and what a what a draw. This is the the Kethis combo dream draw. Oh, there's a Kethis, okay, and a reality chip. Oh dear. We might be dead already. Well, play the land, Leyline Prowler. <laughs> Got him. Mm-hmm. Gonna get back the reality chip, sure, sure, sure. Please, the reality chip. Yeah, removal would be sweet. My, oh my goodness, they already have double mocks. Well, opponents opponents set to go off here. Like they need the, the mill dork to go truly infinite, but wow. Okay, three, three Mox Ambers. What a draw for our opponent. Legend rules themselves for some reason. I guess they just don't care. The opponent's just gonna play through their deck until they... Okay, there's the, the mill dork. Wow, so our opponent's already ready to go. Four Mox Ambers. So our opponent is already prepared to go infinite. All they need is Kethis and they go infinite. Good hand, good hand. Next turn we might play a Ronas. Actually, you know what I think we do is Gaia's Blessing, target you, Mox Amber, Mox Amber, Mox Amber. Shuffle him in, <laughs> got him. Unfortunately, we don't draw land, so we will pass the turn. Okay, so we got rid of the Mox Ambers for now. Random sideboard card one did something. Really? We shuffled it to the top of our opponent's deck. <laughs> it was the very top card. Oh. Well, on second thought, random sideboard card number one might not have done anything. Opponent gonna spin the Kinning, cause why not? Can they hit the Kethis? No, Flibblethip to draw two Magic the Gathering cards. Well, okay, return to nature. Exile the Mox Amber. Lot of, lot of effort going into trying to fight these Mox in. Passing. Land? Land, but not the one we were hoping for. Well, play the land. Play, I guess, a Zika. We can't play Prismatic Bridge. Pass the turn. <laughs> I think we might just be waiting to die here. I mean, Kethis combo is is a tricky matchup. It's not like our creatures really do. Oh, there's a Kethis. Okay, so as soon as our opponent hits a Mox, we tried so hard to get rid of those Moxen, but as soon as they hit a Mox, they they win. Well, we'll see. So I cast stuff from the graveyard, try to mill until they hit a Mox, and then the same combo we talked about in game one. Yep, Hope Gerper from the Emery. Cast it to mill some cards. Apparently it's free. Oh, it's free because of Kethis. All right, gets in with Hopagurper. I mean, it's not like we're casting anything anyway, so sure. Although, I don't know if they want to do this. They lose the reality chip. Let's see if they mill a Mox. Relic of Legend, so they have all the mana. There's the Mox, infinite. Well, <laughs> all right, not the, not, the, not the best start. Not the best start. Do we move up to Mythic 1800 for losing with this deck? We are at Mythic 98%. I'm pretty sure that's at 1800. Although maybe that's maybe that's the same thing. Tough matchup for the Memer Dream. Did not have the right hate cards. Although the Gaia's Blessing like kind of tried. It didn't do enough, but it, it tried. It tried to do something. All right, we get to play first and one land. I don't think we can keep that. All right, whoa, Tainted Remedy. The correct thing to do is probably to put it to the bottom. But if they're life gain, look out. You know what? Let's just put a catcher to the bottom. We're gonna keep, you can't play, you can't play this deck and then pitch your Tainted Remedy. Why else would you have Tainted Remedy in your deck? Makes me nervous that there's Goblin in our opponent's name. If they're playing Goblins, Tainted Remedy, not gonna do my, oh my God, they, 
might be living up to their name. All right, land on black. Ills and Gary added. If we could somehow spin into Prismatic Bridge, maybe that does something. Okay, not goblins. Well, okay, sort of goblins. Zertar goblin. Well, land on red. Like Clothis. No attacks. I think we are trying to get down Prismatic Bridge. I think that's goal number one. Let's see if we're alive. If they have like more haste. All right, Pellet Collector. Arnie slays the troll. Oh, gets to fight our carry at it. Okay. Yep. Well, that's that's not great. That's not great. Pony gets and hits us. Well, in that case, I guess we get to play Azika. <clears throat> Since we can't play Prismatic Bridge. Opponent gonna grow the dorks. Last mode of this is gain life. <laughs> our secret tech. <laughs> gonna show our opponent one up. About it. Land. Also something to keep in mind that the deck's plan does require drawing the world tree. And I don't really think there's a way to find the world tree. I think you're just hoping that you draw into it. I feel like gross spirals. Gross spiral effects would probably be... Oh dear. Oh dear God. Okay. Well, we're just dying. Uh, yeah. We will, I guess, block here. Down to 11. Kefis. Okay, so we get to get in for one. Boom, vigilance busted. Tainted remedy. Kefis. Opponent. Oh, down to 13, tainted remedy. <laughs> I mean, we're about to lose, but down to 13, Tainted Remedy did a thing. With decks like this, you gotta celebrate the small victories. And Tainted Remedy doing something, that is the definition of a small victory, but for this deck, that's like winning a Pro Tour. That is, that is this deck's Super Bowl. <laughs> a Tainted Remedy trigger. Uh-huh. No blocks. It's a land. But then we just die. I mean, I guess we don't just die, right? We jump block, although this has trample. All right, I mean, I think we just die. Pass the turn. Uh, opponent, den of the bugbear. Okay, now, now we literally just die. We were trying to not scoop early, and we didn't scoop early, but yeah, another haste creature means we're definitely dead. Is it time for Imperius Perfect? Is it time for the Elf Lord? Is this the matchup? Leyline Prowler. Casually is a war. You know what? A Chromus Memorial. That seems sweet. I don't know if we never cast it, but if we did, that would be sweet. Uh, so Blight Beetle is somewhat relevant. Gaia's Blessing is irrelevant. Tainted Remedy, it did technically do a thing, but our opponent's not really trying to gain life. Biomancer's familiar. I got no idea what that card's trying to do. I guess it combos with like Carvoli. <laughs> I, I got no clue. I feel like it is possible for this deck to win a game though. Like I could imagine, I, I could imagine somehow living long enough to, to World Tree. I think that's like technically possible. This deck definitely should be playing several to many more lands. Many, many more lands. Uh, all right, Chroma's Memorial is going bottom, I guess. Green source. It's uh, it's only playing 22 lands, and its plan is to get to 11 mana. So that would mean, assuming we have no mana dorks, we need to draw literally half of the lands in our deck. 50%. <laughs> this might be one of those decks where, where we do a little updating. I don't know. I think with Meme or Dream, if we get to the point where we're like, we have 0%, like, uh, it's definitely a meme. It's definitely a meme. Maybe we just like update it and try to see if we can make a little better version. I do like that we're hitting lands this game and that we're not dying yet. Like there is a realistic chance of us getting to casualties of four. Could use a ramp spell. That would be sweet. Oh it land and gruel spellbreaker. Well, world tree go. Man is gonna get good eventually. Opponent and oh God, hasty, hasty boys and girls, and whatever this thing is, ogres. Hits us down to 13. <laughs> return, not the matchup for return to nature. Well, okay. God Eternal Ronas at least is big enough to block one of our opponent's threats, assuming it doesn't die. Land for our opponent. And then next turn we can casualties of war to kill two things. Questing Beast, opponent with a big attack. Gonna make some manas. Really would like this 
Ronas to live. Well, kill the Spellbreaker, hopefully. If we get Embercleave, we're so dead. Not much we can do about it, though. Like, Embercleave is literally lethal here. Okay, opponent Bone Crushes. Not Embercleave, at least. Down to five. Wait, does this mean we're still dead? So we can kill a thing with casualties in a land. Uh, don't want that back in the deck. So we're probably still dead. There's the Blight Beetle. Uh, well, land on black. Casualties. Landing creature. Questing beast. So we're not necessarily dead. Our opponent needs a land for Den of the Bugbear, and then we're dead. And I mean, I guess we're, okay, there's, there's the land. There's the Den of the Bugbear. <laughs> Oh, oh, looking, look at a smidge meme. So now we've reached the point of our meme or dream episode where we start to think, how is it possible that this deck won six times in a row at platinum rank or better? Here would be my guess. Wizards, bug, whatever. That's always a possibility when it comes to wizards digital. So maybe that's S tier option is <laughs> wizards messed up. But I could imagine, here's how I could imagine it winning. I think it is, you're going to need a very specific matchup and things to go well to actually get to the world tree with 22 lands and the setup. Well, what I could imagine is, what if you just went like, Illicent Carry added into a Scarab God or a Golos or something. Uh, uh, you're one of Joda. Like, if you hit the right one ofs. Like, look at this hand. We actually have, this looks like a, a somewhat real hand. This is like kind of kind of respectable, actually. Three ram spells, a world tree. Could you imagine if we top deck a, a Scarab God or something or a Joda? That would actually be a way that I could see this deck actually winning. Oh no, they're playing gates. Oh dear. That's gonna mean lots of sweepers. Uh, well, play a land, Paradise Druid. Yeah, that's the scary part that our opponent's gonna be able to wrath our board pretty easily, I think. Incubation Druid. Play the land. I wanna see it work once. If we can actually pull off the god thing once, oh my god, it would be so sweet. Okay, Gatebreaker Ram. That's also gonna be a problem. Opponent it plays a land. Oh, there's a Scarab God. Well, land on green. Level up Incubation Druid. Why did it tap itself? No one will ever know. Well, okay, we'll have to be aware of that. Unfortunately, Land Gates of Blaze still wrecks us. All right, opponent goes ramping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we're not that far away. Although our opponent is nining us here. So close yet so far, we draw a mountain. Play the mountain. Scare of God, Paradise Druid, Gaia's Blessing. Boom, shuffle that back in. You don't wanna draw that, do you? Another World Tree past the turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If we untap here without our board getting wrath, we actually get to do the thing. We have managed to draw enough ramp that we could actually do it. Okay, joint expiration. If our opponent has a sweeper, then we cry ourselves to sleep and say almost. Actually, we can't do it because incubation druid doesn't count. Oh my God. It doesn't work because this has to make the same color of mana. <laughs> That's an 11-11. And another one. Oh, we were so close. Yeah, incubation druid doesn't actually work doesn't actually work with the combo because it has to make three mana of the same color. Wow, we almost did it. So we play this land on whatever. Wow, check this out. So white, white, blue, blue, red, red. But then this all has to make the same color so it doesn't Oh uh, yeah, so we actually got enough man and it still doesn't work. <laughs> and now we die to the trampling grabs. Oh no! Well, that was actually close. That was by far the closest we've gotten to, to that actually working. Like, easily, easily the closest. Still didn't quite get it, but I mean, I guess it shows that it's like sort of possible in the right matchup. If, if we had made it one more... One more turn, we could have done it. The problem is our opponent had all those 11-11 with trample, so making it one more turn was not an option. But if we could have made it one more turn, we actually would have got to put all the gods into play. But that did require us drawing two of three Paradise Druids and one of one Incubation Druid in our opening hand. That was like the dream draw. Ooh, Fabro Elder. We don't have white mana, but if we draw it, look out. Uh, all right, Lango. Opponent. 
Tab land. Uh, well, land on black and Ilsen carry added. Fabro Elder is some sweet ramp. Abonet, tap land. Relic of Progenitus. Hmm. <clears throat> um, Fabro Elder. Unfortunately, still kind of only making two mana here, but, but, uh, I'm still worried about Gates of Blaze just ruining our day. Land on blue go. And we also don't have the world tree this draw, so we can't, we can't do that. Golos could find it. Abonet, tap land. More relics, sure. Well, let's go, Los. Get the world tree. Hit you for one. All right, two more lands, two more lands, and we can activate Golos. Green, black, blue. I mean, I guess technically, no, we can't. This makes white, white, red, green, black, blue. Oh, maybe we can. All right, gets rid of the Golos. Well, that's a bummer. Ooh, Scarab God. Yeah, I mean, I guess we play Scarab God. That makes the Fabro Elder quite a bit better. We're just gonna pray they don't have the Sweeper. Fabro Elder. If they got the Sweeper, we're super dead. If they don't have the Sweeper, can we do it? I think we can do it next turn with double Fabro Elder if they don't have the Sweeper. Come on, Magic Gods. Ah! That looks like the game to me. Wow, we got close twice. Now we are, now we are nowhere. Nowhere forever. Well, all right, Biomancer's familiar. That was so close. We almost did it. About it. Gonna do some ramping. Yeah, now, I don't even know what Circle of Greens do it does in this deck. Like, I don't know how adding a whole bunch of green mana is productive. It doesn't seem like it's helpful. Pass it. So we can't cast the back side of this. Well, I guess that means we play the front side. Next time target creature adapts, it adapts as though it has no plus one plus one counters on it. GG. All right, get in with a familiar, might as well. Down to 70. Ooh, Baldur's Gate. Opponent's gonna get their companion. Plays a Gatebreaker Ram. Yeah, it's just a nine nine, no, no worries. This only, oh, they get to draw a ton, ouch. Uh, this only makes activated ability on creatures cost less, so it doesn't do anything with the world tree. If we could turn it into a creature, maybe maybe that would be helpful. About it, grow spiral. That's a card I think we should have in our deck. Plays Plaza Harmony, gain some life. Plays a gate, draws some cards. We draw Gaia's Blessing. I guess we... Blow up the guild summit. Not that it really does a ton. I think the damage has mostly been done here. Or maybe... <laughs> or maybe our opponent has a negate. Well, okay, Gaia's Blessing. Shuffle that back in. Draw Joda. Pass the turd, but that's a 10-10 Vigilance Trample. Yeah, we're getting close to the point where we declare this a meme, I think. <laughs> we did come kind of close this match, though. Like, if our opponent did not... Did not have the sweeper. We actually could have activated the world tree. Abonent makes a ridiculous amount of mana with Baldur's Gate. I wonder if gate world tree would be worth it. Yeah. He uses one of the, the fake gate. Oh my God, another one. Hey. Yeah, I don't think there's a card in our deck that gets us out of this. Okay, opponent goes to combat, hits us for 10. What could we draw that would matter? Joda doesn't do anything. We're just officially dead. So we play Joda, but it's not big enough to matter. And then we die. Cool. Okay, we'll get we'll give it one more shot. One more shot. Last try for this deck. And then we'll talk a little bit about maybe if there's a way to rebuild it. But I think, I mean, at this point, I think it's pretty safe to say that it's a meme. We're gonna have a lot to talk about as we talk about uh, the issues with this deck. All right. This is a double Fabro Elder hand. We saw it almost work the last time. Oh no, this is a control deck. We saw it almost work the last time. I don't know how it's gonna work against Drago Control. That's a mistake. Well, that increases, oh, eh, just kidding. Has officially gotten to Teferi next turn. There's a big, big J. 
<laughs> got the got the big J going about it. But our opponent's to the point where they can just start playing to fairies and so forth. Turn one, stifle the, the Lotus Field, or turn two, still four manas. Well, play the tap land. One, two, three, four. Let's try to play the back side of this just to just to give us more colors for the Fabro Elder. And then that lets us cancel Jengatha. If this resolves, we have once again gotten to the spot where we could potentially do the world tree thing. Oh, please don't wrath us. Wandering Emperor. I'm gonna kill the Faber Wilder, I assume. Well, I mean, that's a sign that they might not have the sweeper at least. Narzat goes digging for Memory Deluge. Plays the land, makes a samurai. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perforos. All right, so let's see. White, green, green. Faber Elder. About it. Let's it go. Prismatic Bridge. There's the counter. Okay. Well, this is it. Can we untap? Do they find, if they find the sweeper, I'm gonna cry about it, ticks down. Fateful absence. So not a sweeper, but still very bad for us. Kills Jingatha. Well, we get to draw a card at least. Now we are not especially close to doing our mana thing though. Another world tree. Opponent gets it. Is this a trick? Or are they just sweeping the board anyway? More lands. Divine Purge. Well, play the World Tree. Play the Paradise Druid. Why does that? Oh, it doesn't get Planeswalkers, geez, okay. Oh, we need so much mana, Memory Deluge, you're gonna go digging. We just need such a huge amount of mana to make this work. And hilariously, our opponent, we know they're playing Stifles because they're playing Lotus Field. So it's possible that we get the mana and they just stifle the world tree. We keep getting close and then just getting super blowed out. Or maybe that's just how this works. <laughs> maybe this is normal. Although our opponent having all the mana because of Lotus Field's annoying. Opponent passes, return to nature. So if we attack, we probably get Shark Typhoon. I'll return to nature. Exile the Memory Deluge. Play the carry added. No attacks. We can't afford to trade mana for Shark Typhoons. Faithful Mending draws and discards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we get a land, then we turn on the world trees. We've drawn all four world trees. If you draw all four world trees and still isn't enough, that's that's probably a sign. That's probably a bad sign for the deck. About it. Faithful Mending. So Jorn doesn't do anything. Uh, discards Wandering Emperor Lotus Peel. There's the big Teferi, okay. So this is untapping four mana each turn. Six mana each turn. Yeah, untaps, untaps. Well, okay, boom, cannon. Opponent has a counter. Oh, now I'm just getting depressed. <laughs> to fairy. Oh no. Strig Proctor, sure, why not? Can we scoop yet? I feel like this is hopeless. How about it plays a lad? Untaps. Well, there's a planes. Play a Fabro Elder. Pass the turn. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're back to that spot where if we draw a land, we can try it. I don't know if it'll work. It's a paradise druid. That's not a land. Yep. And play the paradise druid. Play the perforos. Well, we'll pay the one. I mean, it all comes down to this. Hold, come on. At least let us activate it. About it. Draws with defense. No sweepers. No sweepers. No sweepers. Come on, magic gods. 
Faithful Mending. Oh my goodness, that's so much digging for a sweeper. Discards, discards, plays a land, two cards in hand, passes and untaps. There's just so many blowouts that are possible. And then Teferi's gonna ultimate. If we do this and get stifled, it's so depressing. The question is when? When do we go for it? Oh, we've at <laughs> Oh, we're gonna get stifled or discontinuated. Well, stop on our opponent's upkeep. We gotta hope for a better time. I don't think we can just fire it off. We even have the perforos for haste, so it would be lethal. No attacks. Actually, that has vigilance, so let's attack the Teferi. But then they can fire up. Hmm. Yeah, pass the turn. Opponent draws. I mean, we're gonna have to go for it because they ultimate to the fairy and then they get to faithful mending. Yeah. So we're gonna have to try faithful mending. Draws some cards. They had the stifle. All right. White, blue. Black, green, green. Come on, come on, we actually got there. Will it work? Do they have a stifle? At least if it's discontinent, oh, oh geez. Dear Lord. Wow. <laughs> Goodness, goodness gracious. Yeah, that's, that's tough. That's, that's very tough. <laughs> we did it. We got all the way to it. We activated it. We got all the mana. And then of course it's against a stifle control deck. I guess that shows a way that the deck theoretically could have maybe won. It's possible that our that this happened and our opponent didn't have the stifle that would have been a win it would be sweet to see it happen one time but it's getting harder and harder to, to construct ways that this deck actually actually could have won that many matches in a row <clears throat> it makes me wonder it makes me wonder i will say slightly suspicious slightly suspicious that the 22 lantana remedy blight beetle guy's blessing Deck. Speaking of Gaia's Blessing, right on time. Well, I guess we cycle this to draw a card. All right, it's a it's a source of mana. We will accept a source of mana. About it, island. Well, land and let's see if it gets countered. Not yet. Leyline Prowler. Wow, doesn't even bother to kill it. There's a Lotus Field and the Stifle. Yeah, that's bad. Bad, bad news. Gaia's Blessing returns. I guess they play the Domri. Take it up. Gaia's Blessing. Draw a card. Joda. Opponent untaps. Passes. Well, I guess this means they're planning on ending our turn here, unfortunately. Mana. Play Jengatha. Mm, doesn't end the turn. All right, well, pass the turn. Then it must be Wandering Emperor if they're not discontinuitying. Archmage's Charm. All right, so opponent would rather draw cards than, uh, than counter the big J. Oh, draw many cards. All right, opponent, double Archmage's Charm. Untaps. We don't have World Tree this hand, which is an issue. I still think our opponent has discontinuity. Well, they definitely have Supreme Verdict. And a land. Add a mana. Yeah, this feels like a very tough matchup, although we almost did something in game one. We almost did a thing. All right, there's the Perforos. About it. Cycles. I forgot there's also one stern dismissal for some reason. No one knows the reason, but there is. Yeah, Lotus Field to Fairy is pretty, pretty good combo. Fateful Absence kills our mana, untaps all the lands. Yeah, I think we're getting to the this is over stage of the game. So we can crack this to see if we can hit a red source to try to sneak attack Joda and kill to fairy, I guess. About it. We do not, so well, we'll play this this ring, I guess. Add a mana for a legendary creature. About it. Yeah. 
All right, I think I think we're gonna we're gonna say uncle. <laughs> there's no way. Okay, we're not gonna play all six matches. I don't think there's any reason to play all six matches. I think we clearly learned that this is the epitome, absolute epitome of a meme. Perhaps one of the worst decks ever that we have uh, that we have played, at least in a long time. Maybe not ever. There's been some pretty bad ones over uh, over the years, but this it would be on the list. So how would you go about fixing this deck? So if you think about this deck, what is this deck trying to do? What is this player? What is Platinum Mythic Ring player hoping to do with this deck? The idea is obviously to put the gods into play with World Tree. So in the spirit of the deck, I would say we should probably not cut anything that is a god. I think if it's a god, it's got to stay in the deck, even if it's bad, because that's what that's what old Platty was working towards. Old Platty wanted to do this really cool thing where they put a bunch of gods into play at once. So I do not believe that we can uh, that we can cut any of the gods. If it's a god, I think it's got to stay in the deck. So this pile has to has to stay. I will say. I think if our goal is to cast the gods, we need to do a couple of things. One of them is we need to ramp in a more effective way. I am not sure that playing a whole bunch of mana dorks is a way to go for this deck. What I'm envisioning, first off, let's move a let's move these hate cards to the sideboard. A uh, little lesson, normally with something like Tainted Remedy or Blight Beetle, those cards can be very effective in specific matchups, but you're not gonna play those matchups very often. So that's usually a good place to put those cards is in the sideboard. If you run into Life Gain or you run into Mill for Gaia's Blessing or whatever, then you can bring them in. Otherwise, we drew a lot of Gaia's Blessings that weren't doing anything. So our ramp right now is we have, <laughs> Two, three, a weird, a weird assortment. Uh, Return of Nature is also a is more of a sideboard card. A weird assortment of like mana dorks, biomancers, familiar. I don't know what that's trying to synergize with. Playing stuff off the top of our deck, circle the dreams, druid. I don't know, Faber Welder if you get all five colors actually is like kind of impressive, but what I'm envisioning with this deck, and I don't know if this is the, re uh, the correct plan or not, is to mostly cut all of this stuff. And then instead play things like Grow Spiral that let us put an additional land on the battlefield. I'm thinking you wanna like try to explore Grow Spiral in the new, the new kicker one. I think if we play those, we might actually have a shot of, uh, of getting there. Where's Grow Spiral? Uh, Grow Spiral, and then what's the, what's the kicker one? Joint Exploration. So I'm imagining these are our RAM spells. They're gonna keep us churning through our deck. They're gonna help us find our our world trees. We also just need more lands and more dual lands. I think that's also going to be very, very important because uh, casting our spells is gonna be a challenge. We'll keep one of each basic, I guess. Even that's probably, probably a bit unnecessary and greedy. The pathways, I don't know if this is just what Platy happened to have in their collection, perhaps, but I think that you probably want actual lands that make multiple colors of mana. Uh, so we definitely want green and blue in the early game. So we want to go with shock lands, mostly green based. I think that's going to be the, the main goal is play mostly green shock lands. And then triomes also are excellent. Green based triomes. And this should make our mana much more consistent. We also want to just play more lands 22 we talked about it during the video 22 would mean we need to hit literally half of the lands in our deck to actually be able to uh activate the world tree 28 might be a bit on the high end maybe we don't even keep one of each basic like is there any reason the basics i guess work with jorn but jorn i don't even know if that's something that's worth considering I mean, probably get by with 26 lands. So if we go 26 lands, probably go down the swamp. So a bunch of triomes, a bunch of shock lands, and then we can go Golos, another copy or two, to help us find the world tree in specific. And then what do we want for interaction? That is the that is the final question. What is just the best? We're gonna have a, like a playset of an interactive spell. The question is what interactive spell do we wanna play? What is gonna give us the best shot here? We could try to go big and just play like a, 
like a farewell or something and just try to get rid of the whole board. Try to just jank them out. Maybe like, how about two farewells and two Supreme Verdicts? Like maybe we're just hoping that, that that's, gonna, that's gonna be enough. So a bunch of lands, a bunch of ramp. The last piece of the puzzle is gonna be the sideboard. The sideboard we're not gonna go super crazy with. I think you can make a lot of changes to the sideboard. The main thing we're gonna do is we're gonna keep all those random one ofs. <laughs> that old Platy was playing in the main deck. And, uh, Ilhrog probably can go. The Mana Dork can go. And we'll just move those one-ups into the sideboard. So there's our new and improved version. I will warn you, I don't think the new and improved version is going to be a good deck, but I do think that it's going to be an improvement over where we were before. So I'm still thinking the original build, it's a meme, no doubt about it, 100%. But I do think maybe, maybe, maybe with this new build with a bunch of explorers to hopefully find the world tree and to ramp in a way that isn't going to get wrapped away, which we had to be a huge problem. Our ramp spells, like we were getting close and then our stuff getting killed. Hopefully, maybe this will give us a chance to put all the gods on the battlefield. When you think about about it and this is a little bit spiky but when you think about it how many gods do you have to put into play to win the game with the world tree the answer is probably not the amount that we have like you probably don't really need 21 of gods we could probably play like five specific gods that are gonna like all turn each other on in just one shot so you probably don't need that many gods but in the spirit of the original deck i i don't want to just like cut all the gods because that is kind of the that is kind of the fun of the deck all right this looks fine i mean got a bunch of explorers we got a sweeper, only two lands, but we got 26 lands now. So our odds of hitting lands goes up quite a bit. Well, let's get down the world tree. Pass the turn. Well, let's see if we can do it. Now, the new goal is, we've already declared the first one a meme. The new goal is, can we put all the gods into play with the world tree? Is it possible? Can we actually make that happen? Because it would be pretty sweet. I like the way that Platy was thinking, even though the, the execution, there's no way that deck won six times in a row. Oh, no way. Oh, is this mono? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, breeding pool, untapped, ouch. Explore, put a triome into play past the turn. I mean, we can wrath at some point. We could wrath as soon as next turn, honestly, if we had to. Lightning helix, throws the infantry. And was, wow, okay, opponents. Going aggro, hits us. Down to nine. Well, maybe we do just need a Wrath. Yeah, I don't think we can take another hit. Unfortunately, we need to play land untapped, but sweep the board down to seven. Could use a life gain god, that would be sweet. Land, another infantry, wizard's lightning. Oh my goodness, so much burn. I mean, I guess we just have to hope they don't have it. Go low. shock ourselves to two. Might as well get another world tree, I guess. All right, about it. Dead any burn spell. Like a shock, for instance. All right, so opponent took a, took a minute to think about it and decided to cast the shock. Yeah, this deck's pretty aggro. We don't really have anything that's good against, wait. Imper you know what, let's bring in Imperius Perfect. I think this is the one. This is the one. <laughs> Imperius perfect, make one one chump blockers. Actually, their thing has trample, right? <laughs> well, that felt much better. Like, yes, our opponent was aggro. Yes, they had a ton of burn spells. They killed us on like turn three. Wow, okay, seven lands. They killed us on turn three or something, but we were actually doing things. We were actually getting pretty close to going off with the world tree. Keeping this hand, we might end up regretting. We'll see, but we can do some ramping now that we drew an explore. And then we do have triumphs that we can cycle. I don't have to play with fire. So opponents just like straight up burn. They're just straight up burn to the bottom. We draw even more lands, put the world tree into play. Opponent, cliff top retreat passes. Wow, another land, okay. Well, tap land. So we can start cycling triomes. We need, we need some more ramp. We need some more ramp. Opponent shocks our face. Well, our opponent not having any creatures helps. Cycle the Proving Grounds. Okay, Lightning Helix is our face. Ooh, Clothis is actually kind of excellent. That's life gain. Well, that's Stomping Grounds. 
Hollow Fountain untapped Clothis. World Tree. Land for our opponent. Soul Scar Mage. Wizard Lightning. Down to eight. Come on, deck. So, oh my god, skewer the cheese. Skewer the critics. All right, so we get to gain a little bit of life. We will kick this. See if we can draw something to stop this Soul Scar Mage. Perforos bottom. Explore bottom. Into a land. Now, stopping rounds into play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Temple Garden into play. Wow. Uh, we're probably dead here, but wow, that was close. Get to Lava Runner. Yep. Do you have a burn spell for lethal? Goes attacking. And. Yep. Mmm. Oh, so we didn't get there, but we played against a, a super bad matchup. And we were really, really close. Like, it actually felt like we were playing a game of magic rather than whatever we were doing with the original one. So we still didn't get to see it. Maybe we never get to see it. Maybe maybe the dream is not possible even with the rebuild. But I do think that the rebuild definitely improved the deck. Yeah, it didn't work out. That's unfortunate. But our opponent had really good draws and they were playing aggro. That's going to happen when your deck has 20, 21 of random gods that don't really do much until you world tree. That's going to that's gonna be a problem. But that was actually like close like the ramp was so much more effective than the original all right we'll keep well hopefully we have some land drops we got the joda we got double explorer we got Golos to get the world tree that's not a land drop um well overgrown tomb untapped I guess it doesn't matter. I mean, our deck is all legends, so... So that's what it's gonna be used for, is casting legends. Bird, in honor of Richard, opponent. Blood Crypt. Blood Dive Havista. That's not a land. Well, explore, draw a card. Okay, there's a world tree. Making it look hard, but kinda getting there. Opponent. Pathway. Thought sees. I assume they take the Golos, but... Because we are a land away from Golosing, which would be pretty nice. Wow, it takes Grow Spiral. Gob oh, Goblin Engineer. Oh, I see. So instead, they're just going to Parhelion kill us? I guess that also is legal. So our opponent has... Yeah, all right, Temple Garden, untap, Golos. If our opponent has Grease Fang, we just die. Well, we'll take another world tree. Pass the turn. Do you have it, opponent? I'm honestly surprised they have not banned Grease Fang in any format. That's a deck that gets a, a lot of complaints, and I think rightly so. It is true that Graveyard Hate can shut it down. Although it's also true that it's... Okay, Thought Seize. It's also true that it's uh, one of the best decks in, in the formats. Now we'll just discard a Explore. I think we'd rather play the Zika passes. No, nope, play a Zika. Play the tap lad. No attacks. Come on. No grease fangs. No grease fangs. Grease fang. Death. Uh... Well, that was a good top deck for our opponent. I guess return to nature in. Sandworm Convergence in. Graft Digger's Cage doesn't do anything here. I mean, if we actually got a Chromus Memorial on the battlefield, it would be kind of sweet. I don't know what we're attacking with, but Blight Beetle, no. Tainted Remedy, no. We can bring the Gaia's Blessing in. Like, we could potentially shuffle a Parhelion in. So I guess that's the plan. We will cut one Jorn. I guess one Azika. Farewell's actually good. Let's go to one Supreme Verdict. We're not like that. Come on, Magic Gods. One time. Just one time. One time, let us put all the gods on the battlefield. Well, I mean, we'll keep it. We got an Explorer. We'll see how much, how many times we get Thought Seize. Bonite just gonna mulligan for their, for their turn, turn three win, I assume. Opponent. Plays land passes. Explore, draw a card. Cool. Blue manas. Blue manas for the joint explorations, please. About it. Land. Goblin Engineer. 
Well, it appears our opponent has mulliganed into their combo. Guy is blessing off the top. No. Well, untap land, Nylea. Death, the opponent says good game. And sure. So yeah, I mean, that's the... I try not to bring that up that much, but I think people underestimate how much uh, the current mulligan rule makes decks like uh, Grease Fang better than they would have been in the past. Definitely better than they would have been in the past, just because you get the free roll for your first mulligan or two. Like, you get the free roll of like, okay, can I kill on turn three? No. All right, well, then I just mulligan because my hand's gonna be fine on six. And what I really wanna do is kill on turn three. I think you can do that all the way down to like, probably five, definitely to six. Like, I think if you don't have the the win, kind of like trying to modern, you might as well just mulligan it. Like you might as well mulligan it. And so I think that the turn three, I would love to see stats on this. And I don't know how we ever could figure this out without playing under the old mulligan rule, but I would expect that you would see a relatively big increase in the number of turn three kills that happen with the current mulligan rule compared to the past uh, mulligan rule, just because you are able to mulligan more freely than you were in the past. Because in the past there was a pretty big risk so you go to six and you end up with like a one lander and you just don't get to do anything that risk is greatly minimized under the the current system so you might as well spin it to win it spin it to win it try to make sure you got the grease fang on turn three and just win the game and such is such is life will we ever see this happen this might be our last shot or this is going to be a four hour video this might be our last chance to see all the gods on the battlefield i know it will happen like it will happen eventually if we keep playing the deck the question is how long can we keep playing the deck before before we got to give up well the old 26 land deck no lander okay into a what oh, cheese all right well we found some lands we are at five cards unfortunately which is less of a thing and maybe we keep this one there's there's a chance god eternal catcher could do something all right opponent also did some mulliganing they start with a ley line of abundance so I think our opponent was mulliganing for combo pieces. We were mulliganing <laughs> because we just couldn't cast any spells. So yeah, all their elves gonna make double mana. Well, play the Proving Ground. Azika's not the worst. That gives us some mana. Well, how dead are we? Opponent, forest, and they have five mana. What are they ramping into? Oh, Karn the Great Creator. All right, pretty dead then. So I assume they take down Karn and get the the thing that makes all of our stuff cost two more. How about it? Oh, just gets a land, okay. Well, we'll play a plane, so we'll play an Azika. We'll pass the turn. So I guess maybe our opponent's trying to set up some sort of combo with this Darksteel Citadel, turning it into a creature. There's a God Pharaoh statue. I mean, so we get to kill the Karn. However, this God Pharaoh statue just makes all of our stuff prohibitively expensive. So I'm not sure how we get out from under this. Oh boy, Elder Gargaroth. Well, play a land, play... Oh, I wish we had one more land. Yeah, all right, play Explore. Play the land Tap. Pass the turn. Wow, this is another one where it might be so close and yet so far. The God Pharaoh statue, if the God Pharaoh statue wasn't down, I think we would have been able to do it this game. Gargaroth gets in, draws a card, hits us for six. All of our stuff costing two more is so tough. Field of Ruin. Incidentally, an answer to the world tree, unfortunately. And Llanowar Visionary draws a card. We get drained. Seems to be thinking about Field of Ruining, which is kind of fine. Sure. We'll grab a land. Well, go Los. Get a World Tree. Tap land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This kind of sort of means that if we draw an untapped land, we can maybe do it if we're not dead. Opponent gets him with the Gargaroth. Come on, deck. If you ever wanted to be good to us, be good now. We drop to five. 
What do they got? If we lose a creature, we can't do it. Oh, they're like, oh. Okay, that actually is a way we can lose a creature and still do it. All right, so we need an untapped land still. Any untapped land, any untapped land. Come on, magic gods. Come on, magic gods. Avon it. Yeah, it drains us. Oh! oh, no. It's another world tree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And a tap land. So we're dead. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. That was close. That was so close. That one shoulda, coulda, woulda been it. All right. So. We'll bring in a little bit more removal. And I guess just run it like that. <gasps> heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. And untap land away. And the magic gods gave us the world tree, which I guess is fitting since world tree is what we're built around. But wow, we almost did it even through our opponent having God Pharaoh statue and like turn two Karn or some absurdity. And then they had the Gargaroth too. We're on the play. Is this the time? Is it gonna happen? Maybe we're in a flump situation where we just have to play until it happens, even if it's infinity amount of hours. So this hand has no ramp. Oh, jeez. All right, opponent starts with double ley line of abundance, which is busted. Oh yeah, they just have the... This is the draw that our opponent's deck dreams about. So their mystic taps for three. Yeah, and that draws a card, and opponent has a land. Well, as far as headquarters. Possible that we shouldn't have played World Tree and we should have tried to make sure we had the, the right lands to be able to Wrath on time. <laughs> oh, well, opponent's playing their own against the odds and uh, the draw is not gonna happen with any frequency because you have to have two Ley Lines uh, in your hand, but it did happen. Oh, we can't go out on that note. We can't go out on that note. Well, maybe this is just a five hour video of this deck losing. So our updated deck record wise, is not any better than the unupdated deck. <laughs> Although in the unupdated deck did get close a couple of times. Although I feel like this is getting closer in in a way that's actually realistic. The close times with the the first build before we updated, those were like if our opponent is playing a deck with no removal or interaction, I guess the closest we got was the Stifle game. That was, that one was really close. But this one, it's been like, our opponent has had removal and interaction and hate cards, and we're still really close. I guess the, maybe the overall lesson is 11 man is a lot. And 11 mana, when you have to fill your deck with janky cards to take advantage of that 11 mana, that's a that's a big ask. That's a, wow, we're playing. Okay, the 28th ranked player on Arena at the moment. Well, we will keep go, go, grow spirals. We got world trees, we got grow spirals. If we get to Golos, we can uh, also do that. All right, so I assume our opponent is playing Grease Fang. Well, grow spiral. Not a land, unfortunately. I'll put a world tree into play. Lands, please? No, grow spiral. Oh god. Well, that's not great running. A bonnet, please, a land. And Fable of the Mia Brega. Grow spiral. We have finally hit a land, sort of. Not pretty, not pretty, but we did find the land. We're one land away from casting Goloses. The Goloses, theoretically, could get us the mana we need to get to the world tree, opponent thought seizes. Yeah, we should have like six lands. I mean, three explorers. If we were Alex Bernchini, we'd have like, <laughs> we'd have Fultron, Cabal Coffers, and Urborg, but, uh, but we should have more lands than this if we were running a little bit smoother. Opponent, Graveyard Trespasser, takes the Wrath, gets in, makes a treasure, hits us, we draw. All right, well, we'll keep making it look hard. Joint Exploration. Yeah, put Explore to the bottom. Put the land into play. Well, okay. Unfortunately, we don't have the Sweeper now, and our opponent's flipped. Somehow our opponent has more lands than we do, and we've cast literally four Explorers. We should be at like 10 mana right now. We should be. We should be about to, to activate the world tree, but not, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, now we're just locked here, honestly. 
Well, okay, so we played the Golos way, way, way too late. I mean, it's it's turn five. <laughs> All of those ramp spells did quite literally nothing for us. Like, literally nothing. Get a World Tree. Play the Proving Grounds. The problem is they're going to be able to just start copying this Blood Tithe Harvester. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, oh this could have been the one. This could have been the one. Opponent. Copies a blood tithe harvester, makes a blood token, shrinks the golos, and then bone crushes the golos. I mean, drawing a wrath would be sweet. Drawing a wrath would actually do things. The problem is we're about dead here though. Bone, it hits us. So we're literally dead unless we top deck here. Another heartbreaker for this deck. Pony untap land, runs out the bone crusher. Farewell off the top? How about a farewell off the top? Well, there's the lands, but now we're just dead. Ooh, that could have been it. That could have been the one. That could have been the one. Oh, okay. Vanquish the horde, I guess, in. Casualties in. Oh, a Chroma's Memorial in. That could have been it. That could have been it. I feel like we've said that like a hundred times now, but really that one could have been, could have really truly been it. So we'll do a little trimming. Actually, maybe we gotta keep the Wrath. Although we're probably has so many non, yeah, let's try it like that. Hit our land drops and it could, this could be the, the time that it happens. I just wanna see it happen once now. We've, uh, that's the point we're at. I just wanna see it happen once. I don't even, I don't even care. I just wanna see if it can happen. Or on the play, how's the hand look? Fine, we will keep. Opponents mulliganing. So we got two explorers, which should get us up to six mana on turn three. Tap land go. Opponent, tap land. Well, land explore. Put a breeding full into play past the turn. Opponent, swamp passes. Joint exploration. I think we just do a main phase in case we hit the land. All right, two lands is fine. Yeah, keep them both. Draw a card, stomping grounds into play. Untapped. Explore. Opponent's gonna bone crush, uh-huh. Well, overgrown tomb tapped. Pass the turn. Fable of the Mia Breaker. Um, well, let's Scarab God. Pass the turn. Well, let's see if they can kill a Scarab God. Opponent probably doesn't want to loot away creatures. And discard some non-creatures. And land and more Fable of the Mirror Breakers, and passes. Well, all right, that does nothing. We draw, grow Spiral. Well, let's explore. Put a land into play, tapped. Yeah, let's just pass. Pass and grow Spiral. It's opponent, gonna flip the Saga. So we're up to seven mana. We haven't found a world tree though. We need a world tree. We still need a little bit more mana. Opponent, Dagnuma. Oh, the Scarab God's like sorta holding down the fort. Golos to get world tree would also be good. If the Scarab God dies, it gets a lot worse. Blood Tithe Harvester. Okay, so that is going to end up being a problem. With the reflection, now it grows spiral. There's the world tree. That's a big one. That's a real big one. Two lands away. Joint exploration with Kicker. Joe to bottom. Temple Garden to the top. Land into play. Tapped. Actually, how much is this? Three. One, two, three, four. Yeah, put the land into play. Tapped. Play Nylea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we need two mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because we also need to tap and sack the world tree. We can at some point farewell away the board, which is probably going to be this turn because they're gonna kill our Scarab God. Yep. Uh, gotta hope our opponent doesn't have discard. A thought seize would probably beat us. A bonus goes attacking, hits us for a ton. Yep, down to nine, not a lot of life. All right, Scarab God comes back. 
would still just like to draw lands. Why is our opponent stopping in our upkeep? Suspicious. Well, okay, so farewell. All creatures, all artifacts, all graveyards. Opponent can sack some blood if they want to. It might be happening. It might be happening. We can Nylea just to try to find lands. All right, so they're gonna Coligan's Command. We'll keep the snow-covered mountain. We'll discard the Scarab God. I think we'd rather keep the Casualties of War. We dropped to seven. Everything gets nuked. Opponent untaps. One land away again. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay. That's fine. Casualties of War. Enchantment creature land. Creature. Enchantment. Land. Blow it up. Snow covered mountain. Okay. We get to spin with Nylea. Oh my goodness. We're so close. One land. Any untapped land. We get to do it. Opponent plays a land. Season Pyromancer refuel. Sure. This does put us on a bit of a clock. Draw some cards. End of turn. Come on, untap land. Untap land. Untap land. That works. That works. We did it. Keep it on top. Untap. Play the land. Yes. World Tree's in here somewhere. There it is. Activate it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Get all the gods. Haste them up. Attack you a bit. It happened. We did it. We did it. <laughs> it was not easy. It was so. We did it against number 28. We did it against number 28. So it's possible and it's sweet. Uh, not easy though. Not easy. All right, one more, one more chance for the match win. So it took us eight matches. So I guess this was kind of like a halfway against the odds episode. <laughs> I do think that we improved the deck with our upgrades. Although, as we saw, still pretty janky either way. Uh, it is, it is just a janky theme. Trying to get to 11 man and put the gods into play. Although, as we saw there, if you pull it off, you do kind of just straight up win the game. Like, it is enough power to just immediately kill the opponent. So, that part was sweet. Can we get a match win against number 20 in the world on probably the, one of the best decks, at least in the format? Yeah, we'll keep this. The Farewell could do some work if, uh, if we get to it. We saw that last game, the Farewell being pretty essential. We don't have any white man at the moment, which is awkward, but the opponent blood, Tithe Harvester. Well, land in. What's Shigatha, an elk? Yeah, let's go elk. It doesn't really matter. Our stuff's, I think, all legendary anyway. Opponent gets in, hits us. Could use some white mana. Wow, sacking the blood. Opponent must be missing land drops if they're doing that. Yeah, let's just play the Triome past the turn. I mean, I guess once we get to six lands, we'll have white mana. Thought seizes. An explorer would be great. We have 12 explorer effects. Any explorer would be huge. I was thinking about taking the Joda, which I guess makes sense. Go Supreme Verdict. Hits us. Do we want a Azika? Yeah, probably. So let's play Azika. Play the tap land. All right, opponent finds a land, goes to combat attacks. Uh, not gonna block. Down to 11. Green, red, black, blue, hmm, white. So if Azika lives, we can play Joda, which is at least another big body. Thought, okay, so no Joda. Thoughts uses a Joda. Opponent passes, well, play the tap land. Go attack and hit you for one. Ah, oh, we did kind of want that Joda now. About it untaps. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we have a lot of mana to go to actually win. Well, now I think we got to block. I assume we're getting bone crushed, but I don't think we really have a choice but to block here, else we're just going to die to <laughs> die to the janky beads. It's unfortunate that our opponent knows about the farewell. That's going to make it a lot easier for our, for our opponent to play around it. Yeah, there's a bone crusher. So Zika down. We draw nothing. Yeah, play a stomping grounds tap past the turn. It's a bad spot. 
Ugh, opponent's hitting their lands now gets in hits us. I mean, we're gonna have to fare well at some point just to stop the blood tithe harvest. Oh, jeez. Well, you know what a farewell doesn't get? That would be Obnixilis. Yeah, I think this means we're super dead. All right. Yeah, Obnixilis. Hey! So we hit an explore. Unfortunately, it is super late. Another sweeper that doesn't do anything. Yeah. Well, we'll always have game number two. We'll always have game number two. Run out the Clothis. Opponent. Yeah, they just obnix list to the win here, though. The Clothis can't keep up with it. Down to four. If we die, we die. Like, if we discard the Farewell, we die anyway. Liliana. So that gets rid of the Farewell. <laughs> the worst Acromas Memorial of all time. Boom. Can you beat it? Dead. Huh. So, game two. Game two was sweet. So what do we learn about these decks? We learned that apparently it takes eight matches to be able to, to do the world tree thing a single time. The original build of the deck, we talked about the issues. We talked about the issues from the very beginning. Uh, so the theme is janky, and I think our rebuilt version kept the janky theme. But the lessons, if you want to learn anything from this hilarious pile of losing, um, the lessons are, uh, I guess there's a few of them. One is, think through what you're trying to do with the deck. The goal of the deck is obviously to activate the world tree. That means that some of the cards that are in the deck don't work as well as you think. Like, Circle of Dream Druid making a bunch of green mana doesn't actually help you do the world tree. We had that game where we had the Incubation Druid leveled up, and the fact that it makes three mana of one color was actually, like, not doing anything with the world tree. If it wasn't like that, it would have worked. If it was another mana dork, we would have been able to world tree. So think those things through. Uh, I'm glad the deck has a sideboard. I'm not even going to criticize it for being super random. It is super random, but it's better than not having a sideboard, although it should have a 15th card. Uh, but it's better than not having a sideboard at all. Uh, sideboard cards, very powerful, but they should be in your sideboard if you're playing best of three. The Blight Beetles of the world, uh, Blight Beetle, Gaia Blessing, Return to Nature, cards like that, Tainted Remedy, cards like that that are really good in a very specific matchup. In general, unless the meta is really weird and you're playing against life gain 50% of the time or something, then Tainted Remedy in the main deck's great. But in general, if you're playing against a normal meta of, you know, aggro, control, combo, mid range, you just really can't afford to play effects like that in your main deck, so they should go into the sideboard. And then the mana base, on one hand, there could be budget considerations here. I don't know how much weight I put in the budget thing because uh, there's so many mythics and rares in the deck, so it's not like a budget deck overall. Like, the non-lands are actually super expensive, considering that this is a really budget-friendly mana base with a million basics. The fact that we're pushing 50 rares and mythics makes me think that it's not a budget deck or not trying to be a budget deck, but even if it's trying to be a budget deck, um, all these basics gonna make it hard to cast our spells if we don't have World Tree, and 22 lands is an absurdly low number. Like, you saw how much smoother things ran once we went up to 26. 26 might even be too low. 28 might be a better number overall for this deck, for the rebuilt version at least. So keep that in mind as well. I talked about this on Twitter earlier, like a, like a week ago, about how one of the challenges in Commander, the biggest challenge of building Commander decks, is not falling into the trap of cutting your land your mana rocks, your actual lands, uh, mana sources to play more cool cards in your deck. And that is a warning that works for 60 card formats as well. One of the temptations is you build your deck in the proper way that's going to let you cast your spells with 26 lands or 28 lands, whatever the number may be. And then you're like, oh, but this god is really cool. I really want a second Azika. What about Blight Beetle if we run into the counter deck? I might play against Life Gain. And you end up cutting back on your lands because they're boring to play more spicy cards. But then you don't get to play any of your cards and you end up feeling bad. So I feel like this deck is a good warning about that as well. So anyway, that is one of the most ridiculous decks we've played in a while. That is the one of everything World Tree God combo deck. Original version, super duper ultra meme. Uh, I don't know how Wizards got that list published. I don't know what 
ridiculous sequence of events could have led to that deck getting six wizard or better a platinum ranker better uh, i i i don't see it i don't see how it's possible like i said my best bet is maybe you just lucked into scarab gods early or something and just free rolled that way the updated version i mean our record was not better overall we played four matches with age we lost all of them but i do think that this deck gives you a more realistic shot the card draw the ramp that isn't dying to creature removal and the other thing is like we probably could change up the god pack Package to some extent like uh, is Joda worth it are all the gods worth it what's the right gods but we did see if you get to go off and you get to get all the gods it was enough to win the game we did win the game by doing that the one time we pulled it off so huh, overall both builds definitely a meme although I would say the first build a little bit more of the meme so the update makes it better but whew, it is still a super janky deck anyway that's been meme or dream that's been our video for today thanks for watching everyone if you got any ideas of how this deck possibly could have got six wins in a row let me know in the comments because it's blowing my mind and I will talk to you soon